Hello everybody, welcome to the XML tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be dealing with creation of an XML file, passing this XML file and how to validate this XML file through a schema. This video is created as part of the assignment of web services course. For this assignment, I have chose the topic of Monuments of India. So let's begin. As I said, the topic is Monuments of India. In this, we'll be creating a root node as Monuments of India. And in this root node, we'll be creating multiple monuments having ID as the attribute. This ID will identify this monuments individually and uniquely. So this is the XML file. As you can see, the Monuments of India is the root node. And there are multiple monument node in this monuments of India root node okay there are totally 31 node or we can say child node of monuments of India now this monument of India again has some child nodes these are names era location state year structure and time again the structure has child nodes such as architectural style design architect height and material used to build this monuments okay so this is the entire xml file and to give brief of this xml file this is a tree structure which summarizes this xml file having the root node as monuments of india then multiple monuments having the features like name era location structure and this structure node again has multiple child nodes such as style, design, architecture, height and materials used. Now further we will be looking into how to pass this XML file. For this I have implemented DOM as the XML, uh, XML parser. This DOM has been implemented in Java programming. So we will see how to pass this XML file. In Java. For this, first of all, we'll need to create two instances of document builder factory and second one the document builder. This will create the parser in the DOM API. Now again, this document type of DOM will contain the entire XML file. This is the main advantage that DOM uses. It loads the entire XML file into its memory. Whereas another type of parser that is sax parser doesn't do that. Okay. We'll create a node list for this root element. We'll need to create to retrieve this root node and convert it into element. For this we'll be typecasting the root node into the element node, element type of object. So this is how it's done. Further, through this root node, that is the root element, we can access the innermost nodes of this root node. So we will create again a root uh, node list of monument list and through the root element will be accessing will be accessing the monument node of the monuments of india further we will iterate through the through for loop to entire length of the monument list so this get length will iterate 31 times as monuments node is 31 in the xml file Now again, we'll create a node and element for each no node in the monument node. So the name node is child element of monument node. Similarly, we'll create for era, location, state and year. For structure, as it again has some child node, we'll create a node list for this structure node and we'll go through the same pattern 
like creating the node and its element. And through this element, we'll be accessing either the tag name or the text content or the node name. So these are the child elements of the node structure. These are architectural style, design, architect, height, and the material used to build this specific monument. So our for loop ends. And this is the DOM parser for the for this XML file. Further, we'll see the schema. The XML schema is used to validate the XML file. Now we can also create DTD, that is document type definition. But document type definition doesn't allow us to specify the type uh, data type. So XML schema using XSD is more efficient than the DTD. For that, we'll create the schema using the w3.org slash 2001 XML schema. This is the library from which it will load the schema. As you can see, if we change any name and try to validate our XML file by right clicking, will get an error and again if we recheck we'll get that our validation is finished and our xml file is completely valid this is important because in many cases the xml file is very huge and to keep the validation it's very difficult now we'll run the Java file that is the DOM parser for passing the XML. We'll input some ID like 23 and it, it will display the 23rd node that is 23rd monument node and all its details. So this is how it is done. There are certain important points that are needed to keep in mind before creating an XML file. That is, XML always preserves the white spaces. So you need to be careful. While starting the tag, you should always end the tag also. XML st stands for extensible markup language that is used for storing the data and transferring data amongst various platforms. Also, this DOM parser that we have implemented uses takes the advantages of the tree structure that we have created in the XML file. I hope you like this short tutorial on XML and its basics. Thank you very much.